Hello everybody and welcome to the second round of the World Cup. Match between the Sage and Mr. Light. The Sage with the Undead won the toss and chose to kick. Mr. Light with the Dwarves. Mr. Light has a 74% win rating in a Champs Ladder. But he's only played three games with Dwarves. Um, he's Canadian and qualified from the Beantown League. Uh, Sage has a 70% weight. 70% win rate overall in champs and has played no games with them dead. So, um, and he's Dutch and qualified from the OCC. So interesting that they both really don't play the game, play the team that they're playing in the World Cup. Um, Sage only has two ghouls and has benched one on defense. I guess this is one of the better matchups to not have ghouls really against dwarves, where it's just about having a big punching war. Um, Sage used his double to get block. And Mr. Light uses double to get more guard. Um, both absolutely understandable, you know. Sage is going to want to make 16 blocks with his mummy this game. Every single turn, just blitzing with him for a lucky removal. And, you know, if he ends up based and gets to make blocks that way and not have to waste the blitz, then that's good as well. Um, you know, he's got three reserves, so he can handle some, some attrition. Uh, I do like that Mr. Light has a reserve and an apple. By only having one troll slayer, so I think Mr. Light's made a good team. Um, dwarves can sometimes struggle against undead because of the mummies, but um, also, <laughs> and you know, and to be fair, it's annoying. It is annoying having to protect your ghouls against dwarves sometimes. So this isn't so bad for Sage to, to <laughs> for his strange two ghoul build. He's initiated contact and he's going to be giving up a lot of blocks, isn't he? I like this block away and not get punched by a mummy. good isn't it the, the problem is maybe he, what he could have done is he could have done a one day here and then got a two day here I can do he can do one day later I don't know why I thought he had to do that first <laughs> yeah a couple of stuns but um nothing too crazy Sage went really hard covering that sideline, didn't he? I don't know. Maybe just wanted to protect his whites from getting punched. Three dice blitz with mighty blow. Try to get lucky. Tricky Miss Light's got to get his guys back together, hasn't he? Both downs good, so now he can blitz this guy. Him, maybe. Push a little bit down. He wants, to, he wants to like push a little bit forward, doesn't he? Because, like, you know, normally you're not in a rush to get forward as a bash team, but dwarves have got to make a bit of progress because they're so slow. So I, I like moving a few guys forward. Yeah. Just a little bit, a little bit out. I don't like this. I think, I think Blitz should have come here and try to get his team back together. But what he's done is, he's effectively splitting his team here, or if you rather, making it extremely easy for Sage to split his team. But I mean, he has split his team. He has put four players here. And seven players here. And of course, Sage is going to blitz this one. 
Oh, I thought he blitzed it. Oh yeah, because he's got guard. He's gonna blitz this one. Gets the rat. Gets the lucky removal. I mean, it's still lucky, you know. Even though he's blitzing with mighty blow every turn, uh, often on three dice, it's still just luck of the dice, isn't it? When you get removals. So, yeah, these two mummies in the way now. All of a sudden, he's got four standing over here and four standing over here, and he's just. He's absolutely, he's played himself here, Mr. Light. He should have kept them together. Um, what he can do and what he, he tries to do, I think, is to make basically a bunch of GFIs and just out-distance everybody and then get the team together back in a screen, which isn't so, oh no, he doesn't do it. Should have double GFI'd there, I think. Double GFI to here, blitz this guy down run him around. I think that was his best play. I really hate the sideline play. So what's happened is <laughs> in Sage's first time in Sage's first uh, first game, Sage went uh, a sideline cage and you know, got his guy pinned and collapsed the drive. And now in Sage's second game his opponent's done that and yeah, that's a this is basically a nothing move. I think with two more GFIs and blitzing him. He could have he could have made some kind of formation that wasn't rubbish, but <laughs> there's an obvious double GFI blitz here. I, I like it. I like going for it. Has to push him into another block, but he's got it there because here he wouldn't be able to get there. It'd be a touch. So yep, just needs to push there, and now the mummy. The mummy pinning to the sideline is real. Ah, no, actually, I, I would have followed and pinned him. But that actually makes a lot of sense to get an extra block out of it, doesn't it? Maybe if you're going to do that, maybe, maybe you could have blitzed the runner and followed, because then obviously less armor. And getting in front, I think I'd have, I think I'd have blitzed the runner if I was uh, going to get an extra block from the dot, from the guard there. Oh, dodge out the ghoul! Doesn't really do anything with it. Kind of stops, stops this. I mean, there's nothing you can do apart from score here, is he? After that, he's lucky to be able to score, really, Mister Light, because that was a. Bit of a bit of a rush move, I think, on sideline cage. He could have maybe tried to screen off. I, I don't know. I think that was I think that was a bad offense. Um, to be honest, I think it was. He, I think he got his team split. You know, it was his decision to move these guys over there, and then he didn't really get them around the screen. Or maybe he could have done. Uh, maybe he could have stalled it out a bit more. I mean. It's rare that dwarves are the faster team in a matchup, isn't it? So <laughs> he actually could have just outrun him and screened off a bit. But you know, in four turns is about the time where scoring for undead, you know, quite reasonable for undead to score in four. For sages undead, I think it's pushing their limits. <laughs> like a normal undead team would have four ghouls. So scoring in three, basically Sage's team scoring in four is like a normal undead team scoring in three. So it's it's touch and go, um, especially if the dwarves just play, you know play solid in that. Guard in the middle of the LOS does stop two mummy three dices easily. to start with it but you know one square back isn't so bad block paying off there I think block was was absolutely the correct choice for this matchup 
I mean, maybe in any matchup, but particularly this matchup. When you're absolutely, your absolute plan is um, 16 blocks with him. Maybe more if it goes to overtime. Assist foul versus a thick skull guy. I mean, it's he's a he's a guard. It's it's a good it's a good target. He's got the reserves, but um, it doesn't strike me as particularly a good strategy to pursue. Keeping the uh, troll slayer back as, a, as like a safety here. I would just stick him in where the ball is. I think I would just stick him there and wait. And then the fact that even if you've got one dice, even if you have to one dice a breakaway, a breakaway potato, you've still got friends you haven't used. I think I would have just kept him on the on that square. I think. Turn six. He's only got two turn, two turns after this, hasn't he? So he really only has four scoring threats to deal with. One there, two there, and this guy. Only four players total on your team that have a chance of scoring. It is pretty lackluster. Good guard value there, though. Getting to make this block. Nice block to make. Huge GFI. So let's let's have a look and see what we do here. I think as much as you don't want to block with uh, a non-block guy, he's got three guards here. So you block with a runner to deal with him because he's got guard, and then this lineman can block the white to kind of take him out of the equation as a scoring threat. Then this guard can go one, two, three, four, five, maybe GFI. And then maybe blitz around somehow or something. But then on the other hand, you do want to get this runner back. It's 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 pretty tough. It's pretty tough how he's managed to get everything stuck on the I think he shouldn't have got everything stuck on the mummy. That's his problem, isn't it? He really wants to have a few guys back to react. But I think crashing into here it should be done somehow. Maybe just one dice this guy. Or something. Um, yeah. Oh, this guy hasn't activated. So you could stand him up, block him on two. And then get the... Uh, get a light. Get a long beard in here. And see, he just blitzes. Blitzes a zombie. I mean, this is, this is his last turn of defending, isn't it? Pretty much. No, it's not second last turn. So he covers this quite strongly. Very strongly. You know, we're looking at uphill blitz and then dodge to score. So there's no real way, but he makes this one dice block. And what a costly one dice block that is. Um, I think maybe he shouldn't have made it. I mean, I guess Sage would have stood up and two diced him with this guy anyway. So I guess it was right to make it. So I guess just unlucky to scull. Um, 
But I mean, did a really good job of, of blocking this off because even if he potatoes, he's got cover. But the problem is, he has left. He has left the handoff potato to uh, to the other to the to this white, isn't it? He just didn't. I'm, I would have. I would have rather base these guys up. You know, get get these space somehow, and lose have the runner back as a safety. Still need some dice with edge three. But gets it. He needs a GFI as well. Because otherwise he could just get pushed and not be out of range, couldn't he? So we had to do a GFI that turn. So yeah, he's he's done quite well there, hasn't he, Sage really, to, to give himself half a chance. Um what Mr. Light has to do is double GFI with a runner and then one, two, three, four, double GFI the blitz with the uh, long beard. I mean, this isn't a huge misplay, but it's definitely better to double GFI for the assist first. Um, and then get a two dice blitz. But, you know, fair enough. Also, puts him in the wrong square. Should have put him here, shouldn't he? Should have put the runner here. Because what he's done has let Sage do a very nice play. Um, he pushes this guy across and then uses the guard to chain the mummy into there. I mean, it's it's not rocket science, but it's nice. Um, now, he could have followed there and blitz with the white, but what he does here, you can see the square he was in. He just assists and blitz with the, with, blitzes with the white. Now, this is really so much worse because one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If he hits with a white, even a push is good enough. If he hits with a goo, even a push is good enough. But he just assists with the goo and blitzes with a white. So that was really, really was, you know, quite suboptimal. Um, but, you know, he's only got three minutes. He spotted the chain, which was really good. And, you know, you can't expect people to play optimal blood ball every turn or anything so, but you know on turn eights of halves really that's when there is a statistical best move isn't there um, all of the other turns there's pros and cons to positioning and stuff um, but really when it comes down to turn eights and turn sixteens turn eights of halves is when you should probably go for the mathematically superior play and you know if, if the if the go if the white both down he doesn't scores he doesn't score. If the white rolls are both down, he doesn't score. If the goo rolls are both down, he, yeah, he, he gets knocked over, but the end result is the same. You know, he needs a push on that block dice. So that was, it wasn't that, it was a misplay. It wasn't the end of the world, you know, but it was slightly wrong. Um, you know, it was a misplay at the end of the day. But the, cha the chain was nice. Not everybody would have seen that. And obviously, Mr. Light didn't see it because he put his he put his runner in the wrong square. <laughs> but I mean, as it happened, as it happened, he could have chained that to get the guard in there for the for the white blitz, which would have been nice. So yeah, it's, it's Sage's game to win now, isn't it? 1-1. One, one. Receiving. Both ghouls on the pitch. <laughs> Could be an annoying kick if he fails the pickup. Good job he's got sure hands. Because if he fails the pickup here, things could get very bad. Doesn't need sure hands.
Another, another foul from Sage. I really hate it in the second half. If it makes this in the first half, fair enough, but you know, it's just the odds were not in his favour there. It's it's just not the time, is it? You know, fouling when you've got three reserves is all well and good in the first half, but second half, foul for a stun there is, is not what you want, is it? Foul for a stun, sent off for a stun. So, so far, on his offensive drives, both offensive drives Sage has had in the World Cup, he has made a foul and uh, got sent off for a stun. Now, and both times he's been against Armour 9, guys, you know, he, maybe, maybe he should have, uh, like, I'm, I'm sure it's not a bad play at all against, uh, against Wood Elves and what have you. Absolutely, with 13 players, you should be fouling the hell out of, like, Wood Elves and arguably humans, but... Dwarves, I'm not sure. And then this mad foul from Mr. Light. I don't know if Mr. What's going through Mr. Light's mind here. Um, a two assist foul? No. If he had all the assists, fair enough, because removing a mummy is huge. You know, take one mummy off a off an undead team and they just look like a crap human team. Sage's team wouldn't even look like that. It would look like a crap zombie team. So... <laughs> <laughs> you know, absolutely, getting rid of a mummy would have been key. Getting rid of one of five guarders, not so much, but I mean, fair enough, you know, he thought it was worth it. Also, he's fouling with a, with a zombie or a skeleton, which are a bit crap, whereas fouling with a long beard is, is a bit crazy, isn't it? But, you know, maybe he thought he had to kind of get lucky at this stage. Maybe he felt the game slipping away from him. And thought, let's roll some dice and see if I can win. And you know, a strength five guard. I mean, it is, it is good that Sage has two strength five guards. It is, you know, to be fair, he's had two bash matchups, where the strength five guards are pretty good. Um, you know, maybe, maybe if he'd been in less bashy matchups, he might have wanted the speed more, but. Kemri was not an easy first game for him. And now, the strategy of getting punched in the face is paying off for him. As uh, Mr. Light rolled it off down there. Doesn't want a frenzy trap here, does he? So, I, I think I would have blitzed this guy. Or something, so that I could have blocked with a troll slayer. Or he's just going to frenzy trap. Just got a frenzy trap, let's go. Yeah, if you could have blitzed this guy somehow with somebody. Maybe you could have got a guard in here and then he or not even a guard, just a play, just a dead body, and then he could have chained him that way, couldn't he? So Maybe that's what he should have done. Chains out the troll slayer. No he doesn't. Oh he's just gonna punch the troll slayer, of course. Punching it, punching armor eight is pretty good. You keep punching armor eight with mighty blow. Eventually, you're gonna get removals, aren't you? Actually, that was a double six on the armor. I pose it. I mean, some people in the chat were a bit crazy about this apple, but you know, you've you've got you've got to hope you get the overtime here, haven't you, Mister Light? I mean, the chance of him turning over, dwarves turning over on defense is pretty low. So really, all Mr. Light is trying to do here is trying to hold up Sage and hope hope he can stop him scoring and get to overtime. So I like the apple, absolutely there. But yeah, 10 aside now. It's a bit risky, isn't it, with all this guard to have these minis here. I mean, he's gonna he's gonna get the two dice the money now. Oh, he stays in com in contact and gets to punch again. And Sage has been pretty lucky with a one in nines from the minis, but of course, 
He does have a block one, which is the primary blitzer. But not, not a bad turn there from Mr. Light, was it? He got he actually got a couple of knockdowns. Got a stun. So he, you know he's getting back into a bit here. He's gotta try and get some heat on the ball somehow. That's the problem, isn't it, with dwarves? The the tackle is are on the wrong players. You want tackle to be on your edge three guys, so on movement five or six, and you've got them on these movement four guys who can't even get hits on anyone. So yeah, good turn for Mr. Light, better turn for Sage, four knockdowns. Pretty strong. I just a one dice the goal that might not have even been bad it's gone that bad for him I think Mr. Lai you know if he just carries on like this he's just not going to make anything happen I, I mean that's that's a more sensible blitz than the double GFI to hit the goal to be fair and yeah keep, it, keep the runner back this is hard for for Sage to break through with a screen, really, isn't it? GFI Blitz. Oh. Made them so many times with, <laughs> with my undead teams over the years. <laughs> In fact, it's how I lost to, uh, oh, who is he, L.U.K., who makes Samba, uh, you know, Samba Action Calculator, which is a great a great tool for working out players. I played him in the U.K. Team Championship and I uh, actually had a GFI with a mummy to three dice a skink with a ball. I double won with the GFI and cast my own mummy. Um, amazingly, I did not win that game. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that, that's the right block to make that block there isn't it and then get the uh blitzer over I could even assist a button there. three dice could chain him to there I'll chain him to there now he could chain him he could chain for an uphill hit on the ball here when I saw this, I thought it was a one dice from the ball, but it would be an uphill on the ball. But I think he probably should have done because he just ain't going to get better than an uphill on the ball, I don't think. He's unprotected, so it was like one in four with a reroll. Wasn't terrible. Doesn't get the 75% knockdown. Used the reroll, still doesn't get it. I'm sure he was going to blitz him, knock him over, and base the ball, but just didn't get the chance to. So, pretty rough dice there from Mr. Light, and obviously. That would have worked in an uphill block, the power and the, the power and the both down, but yeah, his, his hits on the goo were terrible there really, weren't they? Now Sage is again running out of time, turn 14, going to have to be a bit of desperation to get forward, has to use the reroll because, you know, can't think about overtime, you've got to get to, You've got to, you know, when you've got the ball, you've got to try and not make it all the time, haven't you, at the end of the day, I think. I'm all for people using re-rolls that help them win in normal time. Yeah, this is looking... Looking like overtime for sure. I mean, he's got he's got a few players free. Start or decides to open with a one dice block. 
Not sure about that. Um, maybe just move this guy in and make it two guys. If you really want to move this guy first. Got a blitz there, and then you're basing the uh, white. Yeah, obviously, yeah, but okay, bl blitzing, blitzing the Gouda pretty standard, to be fair. He has to shore up this side, though. He has to move one, two, three, four. Or... One dice block, no, but the play was... Now he has to move the Blitzer out there. But um, I think the play was to just make a big line and make it hard for Sage to get forward. He's not moved them out there, so that is a big mistake by uh, Mr. Light not covering the side more. He could have really covered the side more. And he has given Sage a pretty good sideline cage here. Well, the opportunity of a sideline cage, should I say. Huge pow. Really huge pow and a KO. That was pretty lucky because a, a push would have not done the job for Sage there. So that was an absolutely massive pow. Huge. Sage rolls the best pals. The best. <laughs> so he dodges away from the runner and then decides just to mark him again <laughs> now a few ways to play this isn't it you either jam in with the blitzers or you elf screen with blitz and a dodge and more dodges I'm not sure Mr. Light played this correctly. And then ends the turn. Now can you believe him ending the turn there? Because this is this is so easy. You just simply move in the, the ghoul here. Because because Sage has left his ghoul seven squares from the end zone, he knows he's got two lateral movement. So you can move here and then go across there and score with a dodge. So you just bring in the zombie here, blitz with the white, just need a push, and then you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, GFI, GFI. Easiest, easiest score of his life. Um, and Sage doesn't do that. <laughs> and this is a good example of, you know, how you get tunnel vision and stuff. Sage has seen something that he thinks is the right play and it's completely and utterly the wrong play it's cool you know it's cool doing it okay good it's it's funky but um he needed a pow to facilitate it with this mummy and then he needed a pow on the blitz as well and then he clears the clears the tackle zones and uh, gets it but uh Wow, that was really a lot lower percentage than it needed to be. But, you know, it's, so, so it's, it's funny because it looks like a really good play. You know, people watching it were, were surely, wow, that's impressive. But it was really unimpressive because it was such a simple solution with much higher odds. And, um, but yeah, you know, fair play. I mean... You know, despite despite the couple of misplays on both scores, actually could have been higher higher percentage plays than they were. Um, you know, overall Sage played much better, I think, than Mr. Light. Um, I can't, I couldn't believe it. I mean, watching live, I couldn't believe Mr. Light ended the turn when he did, when it was so easy to get out of it. Um, but then Sage invented a way to get out of it anyway. But you know, yeah, and, he, and he's he's ended the game with a reroll. He didn't even try those dodges. Those dodges were seventy-five percent. You know, you got to go for both of them, haven't you? To just try and try and make try and make it harder than not hard at all. So, you know, it's absolutely fully deserved by Sage. And again, you know, you can forgive people not making hundred percent optimal plays. I was just pointing it out for people watching the stream, as uh, you know, <laughs> how how it how it should have ended, <laughs> if you like. Uh, you know, but yeah, that was really. 
you know, it was 100% deserved from Sage. I think Mr. Light's offense was terrible. Um, and his defense just wasn't good enough. So, yeah, thoroughly, thoroughly deserved win from the Sage, unless there's a riot and a dwarf two turn. There isn't. But, you know, at least he set up for, at least he set up for the riot. Um, gave himself a shot, but. Yeah, that was maybe that was maybe that was Mr. Light's inexperience with dwarves showing because he split his team up like that and then was forced to score early and and then just didn't do enough on offense. I mean, it was really slow and particularly the last turn though, very 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 poor to be honest. You know, maybe he'll be kicking himself after that, Mr. Light, because I do think he's a very good coach. Normally, <laughs> but congrats to Sage, thoroughly deserved. Um, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and stay fantastic.